All right, here we go. Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, you may be surprised to see not Luke here because Luke is away on a press tour. Uh, I am Charlie Bates. I am associate producer here at FFI. Uh, I <laughs> and I have a helpful script here that Luke has left for me, so this should be pretty straightforward. Uh, let's see. Uh, we're going to pick up with a little bit of what we were doing last time uh, when I guessed it on Thursday. Uh, just bear in mind that this is a work in progress, of course, and is subject to change um, at the discretion of our licensors. So with that being said, um, and actually before we jump right into it, uh, I mentioned before, Luke is on a press tour, so he is going to start dropping some more uh, information in the coming weeks as he's been doing. So keep an eye out for that. Um, and I'll leave the rest to him. All right. Uh, let's see. We're going to play through, uh, if you've been with us last couple of sessions, you've seen uh, us playing through Quest 3, which has some branching paths. Um, so we are actually going to, I should click on the right screen here. We are going to go through it again and show you uh, an additional uh, number of options that you can make when you play through the quest. Uh, as we mentioned last time, Sauron, of course, who you play against, uh, has undergone a bit of a reworking. So he's tougher than ever. Uh, last time we went through it on easy and we won. So that's great. Hooray for us. I'm going to try it on normal with the uh, default deck that you get uh, when you, you start playing the game. So this may not go well for me, but uh, we'll give it a try and see what happens. Um, all right. Oh, uh, by the way, one note uh, regarding the languages. Uh, we've had some questions about this before. Just a reminder, uh, we are planning at launch to do uh, English, French, Italian, German, and Spanish. Um, Portuguese and some fly Chinese will be coming later. So, all right. So this is the quest selection screen. We are going to choose Lost in Mirkwood. And it's just me today because we don't have uh, co-op active yet. And then we have the dramatic transition into the loading screen. And hello to France. You have escaped from the spider's dark colony, only to find yourself lost in the vastness of Mirkwood. Discovering the way out... Ah, so here's one thing to note, is, uh, as I said, this is a work in progress, so we've updated the narrative text for uh, various quests, so Galadriel's voice is not always going to be quite consistent, but again, that's just the nature of these sorts of things. Um, so the, the bottom line is we got to get out of Mirkwood... All right, and we are going to, oh, two warrior swords. I'm tempted to keep that. I, oh no, <laughs> I forgot he built this. Uh, this is a deck with Frodo. This is probably not going to go well, um, but we'll see. We'll just play it as it lies. Uh, all right, Frodo is, he, he's a good character, but he's built to be uh, somewhat more sneaky and uh, we may need to be uh, a little more assertive in this particular quest. So let's see what happens. Uh, all right, we'll just do that. All right. Great, uh, let's see. First things first. Oh man, this is going to be interesting. Okay. Arwen tends to uh, be attacked now um, because she has the healing ability, so I've found it's a good tactic to equip her with some offensive capability because it gives them pause. Holy cow, this thing is a tough spider. All right, uh, let's go. Hmm. I'm going to see what other cards we might need here. Okay. Wow. A couple of bears. All right. And I 
I can see a few questions here. Let's see if I survive this first turn, and I'll, I'll uh, maybe answer some of them. Okay. Yeah. Ah, good for you, Sauron. So you can see here, he didn't bother attacking with the bear because the bear has no offensive capability, but he's still a potential threat there. Um, all right. And unfortunately... I don't think I can... It's been a while since I've tried to go after a... Uh, an objective when there is a character with sentinel out there so let's see I gotta remind myself which path I want to take I want to climb the hill so let's see if I can do this and I cannot unfortunately so in that case I am NOT going to attack with Frodo well maybe I will let's get rid of these things cuz oh, I can't do it that's right that's the problem with sentinel I always forget but on the plus side, he did not get attacked either, so. All right, let's do this. Okay, so um, we're still working on uh, challenges right now, but we do have a plan to implement uh, both uh, daily and uh, epic challenges, so there will be more on that later. I'll leave that to Luke. Um, <laughs> yeah, the, this is... Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, hmm. I am going to try this. Man, I wish I had somebody ranged. Well, let's see what other cards I can get. Aha! This is what I was hoping for. Mm -mm -mm. Let's get rid of those guys. Okay, and if you haven't seen Frodo in action before, this effect shows that he has stealth. Uh, so he cannot be attacked as long as I have uh, other characters active. Um, and of course I lost my archer right away, but whatever. Okay, so let's do this. That was an interesting choice. Hmm. So this is this is smart on Sauron because I want to get rid of this bear since uh, he has not exhausted yet. But it'd be great to be able to knock this one out because he's got the higher health. So one of the many instances... Ah, actually, let's try... Well, no, because then he's going to go after him instead. Oh, Sauron, you're such a pain. Now let's do the smart play. Okay. Now, Luke wanted me to climb the hill, so let's try climbing the hill. And see what happens next. I'm actually a little surprised I've survived this far already with this makeup. Uh, and yeah, for those of you who might not have seen previous... Uh, uh, streams. This is similarly challenging to the tabletop. Uh, again, there are a uh, number of key distinctions to, to gameplay and presentation, of course, but the heart of the game, uh, you know, you're, you're not meant to be able to just traipse through and, and win without breaking a sweat. So this does take a lot of uh, strategy to try and defeat Sauron, and I'm <laughs> I'm speaking hesitantly because I am trying to strategize right now. Uh, okay. I may need to play that out. Uh, and I definitely need to heal. You need not worry about anything. Damn, why are they both shown as exhausted? That's strange. I wonder if that's a bug. Well, we'll see what happens. Uh, okay. Alright, 
Well, we'll just go from there. That's fine. That's why they were there. Yeah. Uh, oh, did he play an effect when I was busy talking so that exhausted them or something? I don't know. I guess we'll find out. Okay. Work in progress. Okay, thanks. Yeah, I thought that might have been what happened. But Sauron is pretty darn clever. Okay, so let's go with... Hmm... Of course you gain a resource. So you can play yet another bear. That's just great. Alright. Let's... Give that to... Alright. Well... He's just going to keep bringing dudes out, so let's at least exhaust the next one. On the plus side, potentially, we can get out of here before we have to... Uh, oh, right. <laughs> Ugh. Nice, so he got a hit in before I progressed. So... Uh, when you uh, achieve certain objectives, or I'm uh, sorry, resolve certain objectives, got to get my terminology right, uh, depending on what that resolution is, different things will happen. So in this particular one, it states that you travel immediately to the next location. So that's why there was no additional buttons to press. Um, uh, sometimes when you have the option to travel, you can choose when you want to do that. Okay, now, oh boy, this is uh, fantastic. So if I survive this, my plan is to try and, uh, let's see. Search for a path, I don't know, well, actually, hmm. So the fun part here is we don't have anybody with Sentinel, so that gives us the ghost of a chance. Um, <laughs> and uh, by that, I'm being foolishly optimistic. Hmm. So this is, uh, let's just, well, does he have, he has two, so that might be actually better to play. So I'll bring him out just in case I have the chance to use some willpower. And we'll bring her out to get rid of one of these guys. Alright. And that's the end of that. So let's see who he beats up first. Of course. Okay. Let me make sure that's the right option I want to take. Yes, I want to search for a path. <laughs> Things do not look good. Okay. Um, I'm certainly not going to attack anybody. Yeah, that was not great. Uh, somebody mentioned, are there new animations? There, there are a lot of tweaks um, that occur from one build to the next. Uh, oh, right. Um... So yeah, there's there's bound to be additional jeez. Oh, <laughs> bound to be additional changes from uh from one day to the next. Uh boy. This is silly. Well. Nobody said Metal Earth was uh an easy place to live. All right. Yep. Well, let's just do this because it's thematically appropriate. Yep. Okay. <laughs> now, just as a reminder, this is on the normal uh, 
difficulty level, and I do not have an optimal uh, group for this. Like I said at the start, um, Frodo is better served to be a little sneaky, uh, and you need somebody who has a little more heft, uh, in my opinion, when you're going through this. Now, of course, this quest is not finalized, so there may be some additional tweaks, but um, okay. So now... I simply need to escape the forest. Piece of cake, right? <laughs> okay, Gandalf, if only I could play you. Well, you know what? I'm not going to... Well, let's see. If I do that next round, I'll get three, two, which will be five. So let's just play him out so there's more cannon fodder here. That's fine. At least it drew off somebody else. Um... Wow, this is crazy. Let's see. No. He does the most damage, so it's best to get rid of him. Yeah. Alright, this is probably going to be the end of... Oh, okay, sure. Let's just wait until next round. Why not? Now, unfortunately, well, we'll see what happens. So we're down to the wire here. If I can get Frodo, which I may be able to. Um, hmm. Well, let's just deal some damage to... Let's get rid of the bear. So here's the thing. I'm down to two characters. One of them is a hero, and I need to survive with at least one hero to complete this quest. He's got enough willpower that he can finish this off. So the trick is, and he does have uh, stealth. So I've got Gandalf as a decoy, assuming this works out. And as long as I get an action in, I hopefully can squeak by here. <laughs> and I'm as surprised as anybody. So this is actually a good uh, example to show how this game can go is I had assumed at the start of it that this was not a good deck build for this particular quest because Frodo, again, is more of a sneaky type. But he actually bore out that having that stealth ability was helpful. Now, granted, I lost two of my heroes in the process um, and I didn't get some optimal draws, but nonetheless... I mean, a win is a win. Now, granted, um, you know, this, this affects my final score, which, again, we're still checking uh, how those will work out. Uh, and I don't know if... Yeah, so this isn't quite accurate. We're, again, work in progress, but uh, technically only one hero survived. So um, I think the points are accurate, but this indicator is not quite accurate. Uh, yeah, and you can see... I squeaked by, so I didn't get any extra benefits, but a win, like I said, is a win. So let's see if I've missed anything here. Uh, someone had asked if someone with a, a zero attack can be declared as an attacker. Technically, yes, uh, because that's different from not being able to attack. The issue is that if you have zero attack, you're simply not doing any damage when you attack. Now, there may be a reason why you might want to attack with a zero attack character, but Sauron, is, uh, because it's reciprocal damage, you take damage when you attack. Sauron is not going to foolishly, you know, throw away one of his uh, enemies uh, unless there's a strategic reason um, for that. Uh, let's see. Yeah, okay. So, since that actually went much quicker than planned, um, I am going to... Take a look at the decks that Luke has created. Okay, yeah, so I'd use the new deck. So let's do this. So there's, a, I'd mentioned before, there's a starter deck um, that everybody, when when you first, you know, create your account for the, the game, uh, your Asmodee.net account, you, you get a standard starter deck. So let's try going through the quest with that, and you can see the different play dynamics that occur. 
Um, so this one is Aragorn, Arwen, and Gimli. And we're going to keep it at normal. So everything is the same. Uh, the cards in the deck will be a little bit different because, of course, Frodo is uh, a different sphere than, uh, than Gimli is. But we can see how a dwarf fares compared to a hobbit when traveling through Mirkwood. You have escaped from the spiders. Uh, yes, you will be able to rename your decks. Um, that interface is still being refined, but it is possible. Ooh, I like the horseback archer. I'm personally a big fan of ranged attacks. Um, they come in pretty darn handy. And Gandalf shows up again. Oh, <laughs> and a bunch of sentinels. Okay. Well, let's see. That's a two and that's a one. Hmm. Give Arwen a shield. And as much as I like the archers, if I bring them out right away, they're just going to get knocked out. Well, I can't anymore, of course, because I only have one resource left. But oh, let's see. One, two, three, one. Okay. So let's see what else I can get on tap for next time. All right. So this will be good. I, I'll have some ranged capability. And you can see they go for Arwen right away. She has the least health, and she's got the ability to heal. So it's it's a clear tactic for Sauron to take on. All right. So, man, <laughs> I'm not a fan of the giant spiders. Or, you know, spiders in general. Okay. <laughs> well... Sentinel. Okay, so he's exhausted, so we weren't going to worry about him. He cannot stand alone. <laughs> okay, now this is interesting. I could get rid of these guys, uh, the Spiders of Mirkwood, but I could also soften up the giant spider. Now, the, the distinction here that I'm puzzling is spiders of Mirkwood hit harder, so there's a good reason to get rid of them, but I also wouldn't want Gimli to get down so low in the first round. Then again, these things are so tough that it might be good to soften them up quite a bit since it's not often that you get uh, four attack. So I think I'm going to give this a try and see what happens. All right, I may live to regret that. Oh, good. So I got a sentinel of my own, which will come in handy. <laughs> Man. Sauron is the worst. I serve the steward of Gondor. Okay. This is a calculated gamble. What I'm going to try and see is if after the first attack I might be able to get the Hortsback Archer to survive. Otherwise it at least pulls focus from my heroes. Okay. Um... <laughs> Well, they have the same attack, and uh, actually, I'm going to keep Gimli in reserve. Oh, man. And this is where Sentinel becomes frustrating, because I'd love to use my archer to get rid of the bear, but because Sentinel is still up on these two critters, I can't do that yet. So instead, let's... He cannot stand alone. Get rid of this guy. Okay. So that worked out. I don't have to take three extra damage. And he did what he had to. That's the way it goes sometimes. Okay. Man, but I do not want to fight that bear because Gimli will just get wrecked. So let's instead... 
Hmm. All right. <laughs> uh, someone asked about player cards. We don't have any new ones to share at this time. Um, there will certainly be more, but we're focusing more on just showing you the, the basic mix of things. Um, I want to leave that up to, to Luke to do the big reveals. Okay. So, I'm tempted to, what I need actually is, is willpower to try and muscle on through this a little more quickly, because otherwise he's just gonna keep uh, softening me up. So the trick at this point, mm, all right, so what I'm going to do is hit the spider, so that way at least I have two, if I get hit twice, then, um, then of course I'll attack Arwen, but uh, let's see, Arwen has... So uh, if you haven't seen this before, so of course characters can get attachments, and there's three different attachment types that you can have. You can have one of each on a given character. You've got weapon, armor, which is of course what the round shield is, and special. And you can only have one of each type at any one time. So here we've got self-preservation, which is a special attachment, which I can attach to any of my characters. In this particular instance, I'm tempted to also give that to Arwen because I think they're going to continue to focus on her and in the long run I think her being able to survive is going to help my party as a whole but I didn't want to spend resources so that was an error on my part but hey that's what happens yeah I know Okay. So now... And I figured they'd go after him. Okay. Oh, man. I'm going to leave the bear alone as well. You know what? Hmm. It might be best to get rid of that spider. Or I could attack him, and that way he's exhausted, and Sauron does not get a resource, except I won't kill him. This is what makes it challenging, is there's so many different choices you can make, and you never know what the impact is going to be. So I think that... I think it's better just to clear the decks and get rid of him. Ah, you jerk. Okay, so, man. She's already got her attachment. Aragorn is getting pretty beat up. Oh, man. Okay, guys, that's just great. Oh, uh, yeah, so <laughs> everybody seems to be a fan of sneak attack. The, the great thing about this card is, as you can see in its description, put a random ally into play under your control. This pulls from all available cards, not just the cards in your deck. So uh, it is possible that Sneak Attack could bring out a, a card that uh, you know is a, either incredibly useful or not so useful, but regardless, it may not even be associated with the deck you've taken on this quest. And since it's all about showing you guys what we can do... Oh, hey, that's handy. So we got a Woodland Courier and its ability is to apply one progress to an objective, so we will do that. 
and then assuming she does not get killed right away, there's an additional two that we can apply. So that is also very handy. All right, so she's got a shield. Let's, hmm. Let's give, I'm wanting to save resources so I can play Gandalf, but I really need to make sure my uh, heroes survive. So that will just have to wait. And I thought that might happen. All right. So before anything else happens, And this way, either one of these guys can, of course, complete this objective. Now, I think I'm going to use Aragorn, because then I think they get a hit in before we go, so Gimli has a pretty good shot at taking out whoever comes after him. He cannot stand alone. Yeah. The forest of Mirkwood is dark. Uh, will there be horses? There will be horses, um, and they will have different functions. I, uh, oof, poor Gimli. I won't say any more than that at the moment. Uh, and yes, there there will be a tooltip that will uh, show the different keywords. Uh, again, we're a work in progress here, so um, that is going to be implemented. It's just not ready yet. Ah, oh, Sauron. Um, yeah, so history, because he did this again. He played Exhaustion, which exhausts all wounded player characters. So none of my characters will be able to react, uh, or act, I should say, uh, at this point in time, uh, which was very clever on his part, uh, not so thrilling for me. Hmm. So I think the smart thing to do... is at least make sure Gimli... Well, he may still die, but at least it'll be harder for him to die. All right, so I'm going to save the rest of my resources because I really want to get Gandalf out. Um, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, caregiver. Now, I could activate Aragorn, and I really want to, but I need a total of five to play Gandalf, so I am... This is probably a tactical error, but I just want to see what happens. Ah, oh, interesting. Okay, that was not as bad as it could have been. Yeah. Okay, so now everybody has Pursuit, which is not great. That means they can follow you from one location to the next. Hmm. What would be great is if Gandalf had the ability to apply three progress, but that will be available in other cards. Okay. Uh, now, I need to, because I'm searching for a path, I need to apply six progress to this thing. That is not going to happen this round. Potentially. All right. So what we are going to do is play Gandalf. I am Gandalf, and Gandalf means me. Yes, it does. And we will... Hmm. I want to draw three cards, but I think I need to apply some damage here. And let's do it to this one. All right. Interesting. That's good. We don't have any Sentinels, so that gives us a lot of flexibility here. And since Gandalf has four willpower, let's try and move things along. Now, this means, of course, because some of them still have Pursuit, we're going to end up with a lot of guys up there but we are at least on the last stage. <laughs> it may not mean anything uh, if everybody dies, um, but all I need to do is hope that no sentinels appear and I can resolve this. That's all, it's, it's pretty easy. 
Okay. Hmm. Who do we have that's a heavy hitter? We've got a few. All right. Well, let's bring him out. I know I talked at the beginning that I really enjoy ranged characters, but I haven't had the uh, ability to use much of them so far. And here comes the question. Do you faint and reduce somebody to zero, or do you exhaust? I'm not going to exhaust because he's already full here, so he can't play anybody quite yet. Now, granted, this is preparation, so it could stay for the future, but I don't know if I'm going to be around for the future, so let's focus on the here and now. All right, so let's plan on reducing him. Now, I'm doing that because Sauron usually doesn't throw his characters in suicidally. So you notice that even though these have the same attack, they're both down to one health, so he may want to hold off on using them. And he may not. As we've just seen. Alright. Interesting. Okay, so now it's probably worth going on the offensive. So that he's not a problem later. And more force flies show up. Okay. <laughs> well, we got Guard of the Citadel, which is handy. Oh, no. <laughs> and, of course, they show up. Well, at least it lets, this makes my choices uh, fairly straightforward. Now, the good news is that I have one resource left, and Aragorn has a power where you can spend a resource to ready him again. So, depending on how things go... I, again, this, this worked out similarly to last time. Because I got a Sentinel out, Sauron's first attack has to be to get rid of him. And I have a few different options on how to get the, the very last progress uh, to get out of here. So I may have dodged a, an arrow, um, thematically appropriate, this time around. So let's see what happens. All right. And we will give this to her. Oh, that's right. Oh, man, I wasn't thinking it through. Because Sentinel, yes, I have Sentinel, but so does he. Okay, fine. Ah, oh, boy. That's what happens when uh, you get a little full of yourself. Okay. This probably will not work. Oh, I actually, hang on. Let me think this through. Okay, so <laughs> if I activate Aragorn, I could then use him to get rid of the veteran patrol, and that leaves both Gimli and Arwen. Or I could just use Gimli, and that softens him up enough that he may choose to go after Gimli with another enemy, and then I can still activate Aragorn. Regardless, all I really need is for one of these two... In fact, I think it might be better for me to leave him. All right, so I'm going to use Gimli. Yes, Gimli did, in fact, sacrifice himself so that the rest of his party may succeed. Now, you notice, because I just went through this quest uh, a few minutes ago, very quickly, surprisingly quickly, um, I had a higher reward than I got this time, and, and that's intentional. You always get a reward when you play through a quest, but uh, it does reduce within... Uh, I forget the specific time frame, but basically every day you, you go through and you can go through it fresh, um, and then you can go through it subsequently, but you won't get quite the same rewards, uh, but you'll still get something. All right, so you'll see here that, again, the numbers on this side are a little off, but I did get more points. Um, but it is really hard, uh, and that's, that's intentionally, it's really hard to earn enough, and I don't know the, the scoring system myself, uh, so that you can get these extra rewards, which I will leave to Luke to talk about in the future. 
are these the final fonts? These are not quite the final fonts. We were doing some some tweaks and adjustments again to the legibility and so on. Um, so taking a quick look here, for instance, you know the card text. Uh, more than likely, the the uh, title of the cards is going to stay the same. We really like the feel of that. And of course, you'll see since I'm talking about it, um, unique characters have this symbol, which is consistent with the tabletop game. Um, and uh, we are adjusting some elements. Uh, again, work in progress. Uh, we want to make sure that we're maximizing both the space for images, uh, because a lot of this artwork is just really fantastic and evocative of the game, of the setting, uh, as well as having enough of a uh, space in the uh, card text field so that you can, of course, you know, if, if something needs more description, it can allow it. You'll notice here Bjorn um, has a lot to say. And again, we're also revising these. We want to make sure we're using an economy of words um, to make it more effective uh, and clear as to what's being said. Uh, you'll notice there's some minor glitches here. This is supposed to be the unique symbol. Um, so a look behind the scenes of work in progress, how things can adjust and refine. And we'll add credits, of course, for the illustrators uh, of each card so that you... Uh, you know who did what. Uh, let's see. We've got a little bit of time. I'm going to take a quick look at a different deck build just to see what else Luke might have available here. So you can name your decks. So I will name this. I get to use this keyboard, which is very weird looking. Uh, let's call this one deck the third, since it's the third deck. Okay. So the first thing you need to do is pick your heroes. So when you first create your Asmodee.net account, these are the four heroes that you have to choose from and you can get additional ones, uh, of course, as the, uh, the game progresses. So I'm going to try a variation on the starting deck. And the, there's various ways you can go through this. You can go through the full list of cards you have here, of course. And this does include, I believe, uh, I don't know what my sentence was going to say. Okay, so I'm just going to ignore that. Uh, what I like to do is then filter based on sphere of the heroes that I have. So this will show me all of the leadership cards that are available to me, so I can more easily just select them. And then you can see it, it appears over here. Um, it shows the cost, title, and how many you have. So if I just want, of course, one Guard of the Citadel, boom, I have one of those there. But I will take two because Sentinel is pretty handy. I mentioned before, I'm a fan of ranged characters. So this, uh, when I was talking before about sneak attack, which is right here, where you put a random ally into play that comes anywhere from your available card pool, uh, reinforcements is a little bit different, that it pulls a card from your deck. Uh, and you'll notice that it does have a higher cost, but that's because... Um, it doesn't have fleeting, so fleeting, of course, the the card played goes away at the end of the round. This would be in a, per, a permanent addition. Now, the added level of complexity to this is, you'll note there's two pips here. That means it's a level two leadership card, so I can only add this to my deck if I have two heroes who are both of the leadership sphere. Since I don't have that, I can't add reinforcements at this time. All right. Uh, it, this is a single-player game to start. Someone had asked on chat. Um, we are going to have multiplayer capability, um, but during early access, uh, it will be single-player, and we will implement multiplayer um, soon after that. Um, we are actually, you know, having to deal with a lot of things to get this thing in the best shape possible. Uh, Self-preservation is a, I believe, oh, because, um, 
Where did it go? That's interesting. That's a really good question. Why doesn't it show up? Probably because it's a bug, which does tend to happen. Yep. It is missing as a bug. So uh, it it is available, and it is in... in other decks, it is not available for this particular deck just because of a bug. Work in progress. You might have heard me say that a few times. Okay, so let us wrap this up pretty quick. Um, so Gone Berry Gone, I'm a fan of. Um, he's very good, obviously, for overcoming objectives, and he has stealth, so he can fulfill a role that Frodo did as well, which is to be available to knock out um, objectives, assuming, of course, there's more than, than one in play that makes him more potent. Uh, otherwise, he's just sort of hanging out there. And Limbus. Why not? I only have one of those, so I'll take what I can get. And then Gimli. All right, so I've got eight more cards. We'll add Gandalf. Tom Bombadil is a uh, legend, of course. Why not? Let's add him in there, because he can discard a non-unique enemy, which is always good. I tend to prefer the lower-cost cards, of course, because you have more opportunity to play them, but sometimes it's good to have a couple of... Uh, bigger ones queued up and one more let's just go with this okay and then you save your deck and then you see right here deck the third it's right there um, and that's basically how that works. So I am going to wrap things up a little bit early because I do want to go through Quest 4, but that's going to wait till Thursday. And uh, I don't want to show you everything at once because that's why we keep having to come back. Uh, let's see if there's any questions I can answer here in the last few minutes. Uh, yeah, sorry, I'd already talked about self-preservation is not there as a bug. Um, okay, so speaking about rareness, rarity, I should say, uh, that is more of the, the cost. Uh, you will always know the cards that are available to you to, to purchase uh, or, or that are unlocked. Uh, so what rarity does is it associates a certain valor cost. So you'll notice here your, your valor is how much you have uh, of the in-game currency to spend. So um, common cards essentially are the, the least expensive. Then you have uncommon, rare, and uh, legendary cards. So that is basically the method of determining um, how much something costs. So obviously the, the greater the rarity of the card, usually the more potent that particular card is, and the correspondingly um, that it costs a bit more for, for you to add it to your uh, deck, um, or to your library, I should say. Uh, but you'll always know before you purchase, and it's not like they're necessarily any harder to get other than that cost value that's associated with it. Uh, and it does have a corresponding, you know, potency power to it. Um, there is also the level factor, um, which I'd addressed uh, here. You'll see sometimes, uh, you know, if it's, if it's level one, you can add it to your deck as long as you have one hero of that sphere. If it's level two, then you need two of them. Uh, so there is strategy involved. We know one of the things that, that people really enjoy about uh, the tabletop version of the game is being able to construct your decks in different ways. So both the rarity and the levels are there to help you um, make different choices in how you're building your deck. Uh, let's see. All right. Um, 
Yeah, and somebody mentioned, so this trait is supposed to be singular. Uh, it had previously been misspelled as plural Astari. We have since corrected that, and similarly Aragorn um, was uh, Dunedain and is now corrected to Dunedain. So, work in progress. All right, so I am going to wrap things up. Um, <laughs> I'm not going to say whether the physical card game was wrong or not because I had nothing to do with that. Uh, and let me see. I want to make sure I give all of the proper plugs before I go. Um, okay. Yep. Uh, Luke doesn't have anything else for me to say here today. Thank you, Luke, for putting this together. Uh, and thank all of you for sticking around and watching me stumble through this, uh, although I guess I technically, you know, completed each, the quest each time, which I'm pretty jazzed about. Uh, Sauron is not an easy one to beat. Uh, but yeah, thanks for hanging out, and uh, come back on Thursday. Um, in the meantime, uh, you can find us on the internet at FFI underscore games at twitter.com for our Twitter feed, on Facebook at facebook.com slash FFI games, and then, of course, on Twitch at twitch.tv slash FFI games, which I imagine you already know because you're here watching me right now. Uh, otherwise, uh, come back on Thursday, same time, and we will walk you through at least part of, uh, if not all of, depending on how the build is coming along, Quest 4, and we will see what happens next. Thanks again, everybody, and we'll see you Thursday.